This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Great, so we're going to start. We're going to try to have some fun. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for coming. So I want to especially give a shout out to Avram Kalangia for encouraging me to do this class. Uh, I had it like somewhere in the back of my mind. It was definitely on my bucket list, as we say. But it may never have uh, material, oh, materialized eventually. But someone had to be the shaliach, so thank you for being the shaliach. So, no problem. Here, this is the, I, I, this paper is like if you have it now, it's a little bit too early for it. So we just want to we want to do it at the right time. So basically, the the name of this class is very catchy. It's called, if anyone remembers, Beyond Kosher, the Torah, uh, the Torah based approach a Torah-based approach to healthy eating. And it's a fit Jew series because, uh, you know, Jews should be fit, I think. Okay, so I, I really took a lot of time preparing for this class. I have a lot of notes. Usually I'm just more speaking from what's in my mind. Here I was more careful because uh, most of these things, even though seem to be like known information, ha- have not been heard or taught or given over in, in any way. And that's why... When you uh, play word association, you don't think like Jew fit, Jew healthy. You, just, uh, you don't really think that. That's not the first thing that pops to mind. I'm not sure why. I don't know what. But uh, we, let's see if we can change that like a, a few Jews at a time. So um, the first question is that when we, li- we live in this amazing country, America, and America gives us the freedom to do whatever we want, and, uh, you know, there's always pluses and minuses to all that. So, for example, um, marriage, right? Marriage is a very loose subject in America. So we have, a, unfortunately, a 60% divorce rate, okay? Now, what about the Jews? Well, the Orthodox Jews, we have a Torah, and we have a lot of halachot in marriage. I actually give a Shalom Bayi class every week at the Chafetz Chaim uh, Yeshiva, if anyone wants to attend. We have a lot of halachot, and we follow our laws. Chafetz Chaim on Main Street. By 815, 845, their uh, pizza will be served. <laughs> so, uh, right. so the, we have our own halachot, and the Jewish divorce rate, the Orthodox divorce rate, is literally 90% lower than the regular American and secular divorce rate. Why? Because we're not following the American laws for marriage. Do whatever you want, kiss hello whatever you want, watch whatever you want. We're not going to follow that. We have our own laws, especially if you're male or female, and we follow those, and we have a 90% reduction in, uh, in divorce. Baruch Hashem. Okay, what about fitness in America, health and fitness? So these are all, you can Google these for yourself. So there's a 70% obesity rate in America. That means basically above the age of 25, 30, the majority of the people are above 30 pounds overweight. Okay, so it's an interesting statistic. Not too scary yet. Now, another thing, there's billboards about this now. 86 million Americans are pre-diabetic. That means they're expecting 25% of Americans to have type 2 diabetes, which happens to be, if you eat right, 100% avoidable, according to all opinions. So 25% chance of having type 2 diabetes, this is very, very, very uh, ardenous. It's not something we really want. Now, the statistics that scares me the most, because I saw two of my parents suffer through Alzheimer's dementia. This, by the way, you can Google any of these facts. Um, 44% of Americans between the age of 75 and 85, that means roughly half of the Americans between the ages of 75 and 85, have Alzheimer's dementia, Alzheimer's and or dementia. That is, you know, I don't want to check out at 75. I'm getting older now. You know, it's like, now it's like, really, I don't want to check. God forbid, you know, and so I... I read an article recently that said people who are in good shape, healthy people in that age, reduce their chances of Alzheimer's dementia by 90%. So this is like, so instead of, so that would be instead of 44%, you have 4%. And this is like, it's not, it's a huge reduction. It's a huge reduction from nearly half to just 5%. So, um, so I'm thinking like, does the Torah tell us anything that would aid us in eating properly? Next, uh, we have another situation. This is what really got me thinking about this. Cancer. 70 to 90% of cancers, I read an article, is caused by poor nutrition. So we see, like, what you are what you eat is, like, 
a very, very, very large part of health, of society, and, and of course, as, as Jews, we know this. We have kosher laws, we have other laws also, and this class is really like beyond kosher. So instead of living in a place where we have to suffer with 70% obesity, 44% Alzheimer's, God forbid, 80, 25% uh, type 2 diabetes, and 70, 90% of cancer is coming from poor nutrition, let's see if we can follow the Torah laws and the Torah-based laws and give a Torah-based approach to healthy eating. So that, that's really the point of this class. And we're going to have a slideshow at the end and everything. And I'm going to explain basically how I eat. I, I'm a 45, can I, I feel great. I feel probably definitely better than when I was in my upper 20s before I started eating more of the, uh, this way. And, uh, you know, working as a college campus rabbi, it's, uh, I got to keep up with 20-year-olds. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I get older, they stay the same age. So it's like I, I got <laughs> I gotta run after everybody all the time. So, you know, by the way, when I approached people and told them that I wanted to help Jews become fit, so they all told me the same thing. They said, oh, it's easier to make him Shomer Shabbat. So, <laughs> which happens to actually be true. And I, I pondered upon this a long time. And why is this? So the answer, I think, is this way. When I meet a student on college campus and we spend some time learning together, then we invite them to our home for a 25-hour Shabbaton. Okay, so for 25 hours, a person feels exactly like a Shomer Shabbat Orthodox Jew would feel. After that, basically, half the people are hooked. They're like, I want to feel like this also. Now, when it comes to fitness, I can't take someone who's out of shape and, put, and make them in shape for 25 hours just like that. When the sun goes down, you'll be in shape. Like, we don't, we don't have that kind of pill. If I could, if I could show someone how to be in shape for 20, what it would feel like, how to be in shape and how good it would feel to be in shape for 25 hours, they'd also want to feel that way. But since we can't do that and we just get used to our surroundings, and it's easier to make someone Shomer Shabbat, to help someone become Shomer Shabbat, than it is uh, to help someone become fit. But we, that being said, we're going to try our best. So I think the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, do our rabbis feel that, what we eat is somehow important to us, right? Does it matter what we eat or we can just eat whatever we want? So I have a, a couple random quotes here. So first of all, the Rambam, who's wrote, he was a doctor. He wrote a lot about health and nutrition. You could read all these. This is, happens to be, there's a book called The Eight Chapters, which is the introduction to Perky Avos. It's called Shmone Prokim. So there in the fifth chapter, he says the following thing. He says, if you eat whatever you want just because you're hungry, he, he doesn't really mince words, so this is the Rama speaking, not me. If you eat whatever you want just because you're hungry and you feel like it, you are an animal. There's absolutely no difference between you and an animal because that's what an animal does. They eat whatever they want, whenever they want. They don't have any guidelines. We're human beings, so we can't do it quite that way. So, however, he also says if, you're, you know, if your whole purpose is just to be a healthy person and that your body should be healthy and that's it, that's also not good. So we have, you know, he was very big on living a middle ground life. And that really the whole purpose of this class is so you should think about eating as little as possible. And the, really the only reason why we want to eat right, right, is because first of all, we want to distinguish ourselves from animals that eat whatever we want, whatever they want. And also because we want to serve Hashem to the best of our ability. So when you uh, are healthy, everyone knows when you're sick, it's very hard to, to do anything really. Right, let alone serve Hashem properly. So when you're healthy, that is your best moment, your best opportunity to put in 100% effort to serving Hashem properly. So the, one of the few Lubavitcher Rebbe's ago, so I, he said that a hole in your health is the same thing as a hole in your soul. Because you're not going to be able to do things. You can't go to davening. I uh, unfortunately got a staph infection over the winter, and I wound up five days in the hospital. So I, I missed Minion all five days. I missed my Caruso all five days. Like, you know, I was lucky I was able to daven at all. You know? So uh, being healthy, it, we can't always avoid it. But anything we can do to avoid getting sick, God forbid, is incumbent upon us. Another rabbi said that you know, we hear this concept of baltashkis, meaning you're throwing out things, right? like wasting. So he says if you ingest things that are bad for you, that's also wasting. Right? It's Baltashka. It's just, you know, especially us from the former Soviet Union, you know, you grew up, your grandparents, they grew up in the hunger years of the, you know, 30s and 40s. They didn't want to throw anything out. So you raise, like, if you leave anything on your plate, you're like a Russia. You're an evil person. So, so we have to remember that that's not actually the case. And eating 
more than our fill, eating more than we need to eat, is also is, is a waste. It's, a, it's like really like a waste of uh, ourselves, a waste of the body. So that's very important to know also. We have, as well, something from the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch. I think he quotes the Rambam. I'm just going to paraphrase this. But he says, since um, having a healthy body and being a healthy person in general is so necessary for serving Hashem, a person needs to stay away from anything that he knows to be bad for him and bad for his body. And conversely, eat the things that he knows to be good for him because th- that's like very, very important because since we need our body to serve Hashem, you're not going to be able to serve Hashem without being healthy. So consequently, what makes us healthy or not healthy, they already knew hundreds of years ago. It's what you eat, right? There's no secrets, right? What you eat is what makes you healthy and unhealthy. And so therefore, it's like this is a great opportunity for us to really think about what we're eating, watch what we're eating a little bit, and most importantly, just follow the basic outlines of the Torah of how we're supposed to eat. So, you know, up until very recently, we only had a few things to worry about, either something in terms of Judaism and food. It was either kosher or it wasn't kosher. But around 50 to 70 years ago, we got a lot of processed food ingested into our society that we've been ingesting into our, our uh, stomachs. We have grains that are terrible for us. We have candies that are terrible for us. We have uh, just about everything that's terrible for us. And there's constant commercials and billboards and as much uh, conscious and subconscious messages that you can possibly get that you should be eating all these things. So it's, it's very hard to, it's very, very hard to move past them. For example, I'm going to give you one thing. If I say to you guys, play word association, what's the most important meal, meal of the day? What do you hear? What's breakfast. The, breakfast. Yeah, having a big, big, good breakfast, the most important meal of the day. Okay, now, is that a Jewish thought or is that an American thought? So that's a, I, I think, it, I don't want to say American. That's a very Western thought. So in Judaism, it says the following thing in the Gemara. There's very few halachot about how we're supposed to eat. But what are there, we're going to try to follow. So it says the following thing. If you have a meal, this is in Pesachim on page 12, side B. If you have a meal during the first hour, like that, get up, have a big breakfast, right? So the Gemara says, you are a cannibal, right? Cannibal, so that's like, that's not a compliment, right? So it means you, why? Because you're a ravenous person. You wake up, the first thing you have to do is eat, right? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. I assume even after davening, right? Then, second thing, what if you eat during the second hour? So the Gemara says, in that case, you're just a thief. You're not a cannibal. You're a little bit less ravenous. What about the third hour? Third hour, it says, oh, you must be a, uh, a uh, trustafarian. Someone has a lot of money that they inherited. They wake up late. They eat, you know, when they get up, they're not thinking about anything but their own pleasure. So, not the third hour of the day or the third hour of third, your, your being right, so your there, being we're gonna that's a great question so it's it's uh it according to most halakhic authorities when it says the third hour it means the third hour after your the third in that case is the third hour of the day which we're going to just say is approximately 9 a.m they switch back and forth between the third hour of the day and third hour after you're awake. So when should you really be? But it's, it, most, people, most people are waking up at around 6, 7 o'clock. So it, it sort of coincides. If you wake up after that, like, you know, because you're young or you're in college or whatever, come see me afterwards. But, <laughs> but there's actually a story of a king, and they said this was a great king, but he didn't have his thir- first meal till 3 p.m. Why not? Because he was a king, so he woke up at 9 a.m., and we're going to find out when you're supposed to eat your meals. So, and he ate exactly six hours after he woke up, so his first meal was at 3 p.m. So the the in uh, Simon Kufnun Zayin, in, uh, I don't know how to say Simon, but whatever, uh, paragraph 157 in the first section, or, or Chaim, so it says the following thing. And this really, there's just a few rules here. When you reach the fourth hour of the day, that's the time to eat. So for our simplistic purposes, assuming you wake up at 6, 6.30, something like that, so we're talking about 10, 10.30, right? It says approximately four hours after you wake up, that's the time to have your first sit-down meal, right? That's the, that's the earliest time, right? Then if you're like a worker and you need to have energy, because as we know when you eat, it slows you down. So if you're a worker and you have energy, 
so then, and you need energy, so then you should be eating five hours after you wake up. And if you're learning Torah all morning, you should be eating at around six hours after you wake up. So your first meal, we, we only have a few Torah-based rules on this. Number one is somewhere between four to six hours after you wake up, have your first meal. Okay, that's the first rule. If you eat before that, right, then you can have something to eat. You can certainly have a snack to tie you over, which we're going to talk about. But if you, and there's, there's some positivity to that if you need it. But basically, if you're going to eat before that, like a big sit-down meal, unless it's like a bris or something where we have to eat, especially Bukhari and bris. So, so then it, it's not good. It's not good for you in the American world, and it's certainly not good for you in the Torah world, where you're either called a cannibal, a thief, or a, uh, or a trust fund baby. So that's rule number one. According to the Torah, the Shulchan Aruch, you want to be able to eat somewhere between the fourth and sixth hour of the day. If you need to have a, some snack before that, that's okay. What's rule number... What? What's considered a snack? Uh, as considered a snack is a, it's a small amount of food, and we're actually going to go over all that when we introduce the six-day diet. So... <laughs> All right, you can, you can get the handout early. We, I even made a slideshow for this. This is like really, I, I hopefully I'll be able to turn this on. Okay, good. Great. So now, if this, hopefully it won't go on me. Okay, so now here's rule number two. You should have a lighter meal during the day than at night. By the way, here's another shocker. You're, you're supposed to have two meals a day, Right. Had, it's all over the Torah. It's in many places written about. But most notably, what, 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 three meals is on Shabbat. That's the whole specialty. We have sh- Shalosh Shudas. Sudat Shlishit is only on Shabbat. Regularly, you're supposed to have two meals a day. One meal between 10 and 12. Then that's called your first meal. You want to call it lunch, dinner, lunch, brunch, whatever. Whatever the language is going to be your first meal. Then afterwards, is that, should I turn this off? Is it going to be a problem? Then after that, you're going to have dinner like six to eight hours later. So we're having two meals a day. You're going to be able to have, of course, you can have some snacks in between, which we're going to talk about. But you have two meals. Shabbat, three meals. The rest of the week, two meals. Okay? So Shabbat, you can have fourth meal. You can have like a malav maka also. Shabbat's going to be a party. So a food party. So, So we have, don't eat a main meal until the fourth to sixth hour of the day. Two is you're only going to have two meals a day. Three is you have a lighter meal during the day than at night. The lighter meal is during the day. Why? Because we're, we're all like, you know, we, we've all eaten a lot of meals here. When you eat a heavy meal, what do you feel like? Tires, gar sleepy. Well, how can you work after that? Whatever your job is, how can you be a good lawyer, real estate broker, a rabbi? stockbroker, whatever it is, you, you know, you feel like falling asleep, you're passing out. How are you going to make those calls? It's going to be very hard. So the lighter meal should be during the day. So the first meal should be the lighter. The first meal should be the lighter meal. And at night, when you're winding down anyway, that's when you have your heavier meal. Okay, so I think that's rule number four. Rule number five is, again, these are suggestions. This is not like eating pork. This is just friendly suggestions from the Torah. So, and the rule number five is, that we're trying to follow like the, the man, the mana that fell from Shemayim. So there, remember, the quail came at night. So we have meat during the night and to, uh, for our protein to be strong. And so it's a little bit harder to digest. So then we go to sleep afterwards, sometime afterwards, and when we slow down. And then the first meal should be bread, if you want to say Birkat Hamazon. Or just any type of like carbs, like you can have like a cup of rice, a cup of uh, a cup of quinoa, whatever it is. So, by the way, this diet that I'm about to propose, you know, what makes it awesome besides the, the, the we're following the Torah rules, is because we're going back to the kind of eating we had before America sort of introduced us with processed food, and then try to tell us about uh, how good processed food is for us by saying that sugar and refined grains are good, while Fat is bad. So fat, besides the word itself, fat is actually good for you. Not all fats, like vegetable oil is terrible for you. Whatever they told you is good is actually bad. But saturated fat, fish fat, beef fat, lamb fat. Remember in the, in the old country, they used to make plov with lamb fat. Now they make it with vegetable oil. It used to be good for you. Now, not as good. So, 
a lot of people, when I say that uh, sugar is bad and carbs are bad and fat is actually good, they don't believe me. So this article just came out recently. I'm going to read from it a little bit. It's from a business, business Insider. Now, by the way, you should know I'm a former, uh, whatever, finance guy. So before I turn rabbi, so anytime something makes the business news, it's real. OK, they, they don't kid around there. They don't have any fake news in business. It's only like someone was asking me, I remember the election when Trump won a few years ago. So someone's saying, oh, what polls are you watching? Whatever. So I said on that day, I'm just looking at one thing. Where's the futures? So they thought that the whatever they had the wrong thoughts. But when they realized futures started going down, I said, OK, Trump's going to win. Because <laughs> luckily everything went back up, of course. But we know that the business news, that's the real news. So watch what it says. The proof is in the pudding. Because in America, everything is about the money. Um, time and time again, studies suggest that people who cut back on fats, <clears throat> so everyone says, oh, you need to lose weight, eat less fat. Right? That would seem to make sense because you're fat, so eat less fat. But unfortunately, not only do they not lose weight, they don't see other health benefits either, like reduced heart disease or diabetes or anything else. Cutting back on fat does not do that. In contrast, people who eat lots of fats, good fats, not fried vegetable oil, obviously, but curb their intake of refined carbohydrates like cereal, sugary cereals, white bread, white rice, tend to see both of these gains. So if you increase your fat and decrease your carbs, you're actually going to uh, be healthier. Now, why is it important to know this? Because the Rambam, the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, told us that food is very important to uh, know what's good for you and what's bad for you because food is essentially what makes you healthy or not healthy and you need to be healthy to serve Hashem. And the end of the article says the following thing, this new newest medical study. The finding was so strong, the authors of the paper concluded that global dietary guidelines should be reconsidered. That means they were just kidding over the last 50 years. Now, you could say, well, maybe the fat industry is biased. Well, no, they're not, because refined sugar and refined cereals is a huge industry. Eating fruit and eating like, healthy fats is, a, is not as big of an industry because it's like all natural foods. And also, on top of that, you're going to wind up eating much less. So with, that's the main switch we have to make in our heads if you really want to eat healthy and, and, uh, and enjoy life more, frankly, is you have to realize that eating fat is good, Right, the right kind of fats, eating fat is good, while eating sugars and refined grains and carbohydrates and stuff like that is actually not good for you. Does, it, does anyone have any questions before? Uh, well, when we, you say fat, exactly. What does that mean? Actual fat. Um, well, fat, I mean, there's like fat cells that are stored in animals that also occur naturally in carbohydrates well, we and in, in, in things like uh, avocados. And when we. Right, that, and just scientifically, I'm not a nutritionist people, or a scientist. Think of fat is actually the white part of the meat. The fat. Yeah, that is the fat. That is fat. fat. But a lot of us don't eat that. We, just, we eat shish kebab, we eat the, the meat part. We eat steak, we eat the meat part. Right, so well, I'm suggesting to eat the fat part and not worry about it. If you want to not do something, don't eat the bread part. Okay, the bread and the sugar and everything else. Like, that's what we're really trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. So, look, basically, to... I just want to recap. We basically have five Torah guidelines. One is that uh, don't eat, don't start your, don't have a main meal till somewhere between 10 and 12 o'clock, approximately four to six hours after you wake up, unless you need a light snack before him. Number two is that you want to have two meals a day except on Shabbat, right? We have the first meal is, uh, you know, between 10 and 12. The second meal is going to be in the evening. Number three is that the day meal is going to be lighter than the night meal, so you have, like, lots of energy, Number four is that you're going to have um, the meat meal is going to be the night meal, okay? And the, uh, the carbohydrate bread meal is going to be the day meal. And th th that's basically it. There's not that much more than that. We can make up some more stuff, but it won't help. It's supposed to be really easy. And again, the whole goal of this for all you here and all you out there in the Torah Anytime world, like we want to be thinking about food as little as possible, not as much as possible. And we, we're going to follow our guidelines and, uh, and, and see what happens. Hopefully we can all experiment here. So the, the one problem is that I found that people 
do, with you know just the way life goes most people do not have the willpower necessary to say no to food okay because like at, donuts look great donuts by the way are not on this diet right donuts look great um what else cheetos you know or i think they have them kosher now or cheese balls they like melt in your mouth these things are made to be addictive right it, it, they had a commercial when i was a kid Frito Lay's potato chips. The the jingle was, "I bet you can't eat just one." They made them so it's impossible to eat one. You want to have a whole bag, right? So most people are going to fall to one of these things, and it's just a bad pattern. So what I came up with, and we're going to have a, we're going to have the slideshow in a moment, is the six day diet. So here, let's pass this around. So this way, it, whatever you want to eat, you can be dreaming of potato chips and Cheetos and whatever and donuts, and rugelach, and kugel, and kishka, and all the other stuff that's not necessarily good for us that everyone knows about, that's safe for Shabbat. Okay, Shabbat, you go all out. So it's, it's really like you have bread in your basket. All you have to do is wait till Shabbat. And anyone has the willpower to do that. By the way, just in, ter- in terms... Oh, you need some more? In terms of willpower, you should know that I do not believe that anyone that keeps kosher... Right? And I, I know that everyone in this room keeps kosher. Anyone that keeps kosher has tremendous willpower. They're always saying no to all the non-kosher food. You never walk by like the best Peter Luger steakhouse. You're not walking by and say, oh, I want to go there. No, this is not kosher, so it's not for you. So obviously, we all have willpower. You know, I'll tell you one like, very interesting willpower story that always stuck in the back of my mind. It's really not willpower. It's like what standard you set for yourself. Right? So there was a, a woman who was on a diet. Okay, first few days go great. She wasn't on the six-day diet, unfortunately. But first, or else she, she would have been eating differently. First few days go great. But then she's like feeling weak. And then she gets a phone call from a friend of hers or a text. I don't know how, how many years ago this was. And she says, listen, there's going to be this like Malava Malka party, women's tea, whatever. And we want you to come. You need to be there. And so she said, well, what's being served? She said, oh, your favorite dairy desserts. Every dairy dessert you can dream of. And this lady has an uh, Achilles heel, so to speak, for dairy desserts. So she, she, like, she doesn't know what to do. And she you know, discussed it with a couple other friends. And then finally, you know, she goes to the party. The next day, one of her friends that didn't go to the party asked her, how'd it go? Did you break down and have any dairy desserts? She said, no, none. She's like, really? How were you so strong? How did you have the willpower to do it? She said, very easy. Right before I left, I had a small piece of salami. So this was an Orthodox woman. All of a sudden, she didn't need any willpower anymore because her standard is she's an Orthodox lady. Orthodox ladies do not eat even the most delicious dairy dessert if they just have even half an ounce of salami beforehand. Right? So it's not about willpower. We can all do this if like, we just say, you know what, I want to do it. In another example, on Saturday night through Sunday, we all fasted for 25 hours. You know, it would have been longer, but we didn't have to say Kiddush Lavana. So, so it was cloudy. So now going into it, like, it like I can't believe I'm not going to eat for 26 hours. But once you get going, you know, your body can do it. Your body can survive for quite a while. Our minds, much harder. But our bodies can survive for quite a while. So what we're really trying to do here is we're just trying to push ourselves off to the next meal and then push ourselves off to, to Shabbat to eat the other stuff. So I'm going to turn this slideshow on. I don't know if it's going to be on tour any time or not, but we need it for the studio audience here. And I guess we'll just discuss it with... Uh, now, if, I, if this slideshow works, it's going to be a technological miracle for me. Okay, so here we have... I'm going to follow up with, you with the six-day diet. Oh, can we hit those lights? If there, there's got to be lights somewhere. Uh, yeah, on the outside, maybe. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we're following along. This is the six-day diet. So Sunday through Friday. It looks pretty much the same. This is, could be on one page. This is not rocket science. So first, this is our moniker, The Fit Jew. Uh, stay tuned for the website. Beyond Kosher, a Torah-based approach to healthy eating. So the first meal is not really a meal. It's morning. What do you do when you wake up? So we suggest coffee or tea for you tea drinkers with either cream, butter, or coconut oil. Can every see, everyone see what it says? This is what I have every morning. You see this is a beautiful picture. You have your coffee. 
you have your magic bullet which whips it all up and you have your coconut oil. I put in about two tablespoons of coconut oil into a cup of coffee. I didn't invent this, it's called Bulletproof Coffee. There's people making gazillions of dollars off of this. It makes you feel great, you feel fantastic. Like you can, you dive in, you can learn, you can, you can like conquer the world. Uh, uh, rules of the diet, rule number one, less than 10 grams of processed sugar a day. So there is no sugar, <laughs> there's no sugar. You're not, you, now, by the way, you're gonna be addicted to sugar if you're having it every day, and you have gut bacteria that say, give us sugar. So it takes two or three days to get rid of them. After the second day, you'll be fine. So you only have to, remember, you just fasted for 24 hours. So that's just one more than that. You won't even want the sugar anymore. And if you really want the sugar, just wait till Shabbat. I promise you can have all the sugar you want. Right, okay, so now here we go. Coconut oil, coffee, magic bullet. You get this awesome drink that gives you tremendous energy for the next two or three hours. Okay? Co- that's coffee with uh, two tablespoons of coconut oil, but you can also, that's it. You can also put in cream, or you can put in a tablespoon of sweet butter. Do not put in salted butter. You're going to get mad at me. But <laughs> no salted butter. I tried that. I had that accidentally once. It was not good. So, so, and then it whips up. It's all frothy. It, it Just give yourself a few minutes to drink it and, like, enjoy it. And, by the way, a lot of you, a lot of us, are from the former Soviet Union. So we always hear our grandparents say, oh, we, the, the fruit here was so good. Okay, the fruit there was not good. It was not any different than here. It's just there they ate much less refined sugar. So the fruit tasted much better. Right? If you don't eat sugar for a few days, then when you taste the fruit, you're going to be like, wow, this is amazing. What, is this new? Is it organic? No, it's this still same Costco stuff. It's just you haven't eaten sugar. Okay, so then, so this is the morning. So every morning I have the same thing. White cream and not milk. Um, because you need, in, you need that fat. The more fat you have, the better your day is because then you're, it's good for your mind. And, and also your body starts getting used to burning fat rather than burning carbohydrates. It's like this whole system that really I am not qualified to explain to you, but you can certainly Google it why burning fat is better than um, burning carbs. There's a man named Abel James, who wrote the book called The Wild Diet, that explains this beautifully. There's another book called Death by Food Pyramid, which explains that the government was like sort of lying to us, unfortunately, the last 50, 60 years. They didn't mean it. They just wanted to make some money. So, so, and, uh, and, and fat is actually good for you because it forces your body to burn fat instead of carbs. By the way, fasting was very easy for me because anyway, I don't eat so many carbs. So whenever my body doesn't have food, it goes to burn fat. If you're eating carbs and your body runs out of carbs, then it goes to burn muscle. So then you feel like you want to kill somebody because you, you don't like burning your muscle. But we do like burning fat, and we have plenty of fat to burn. Okay. What half and half? Half and half, I don't recommend. Just go for the real stuff. You know, for, this is like, there's this not really, no Diet Coke, no half and half, no lean beef, just real stuff, right? Okay. So now if you need to have a snack before your, your next meal, which is totally fine, You have a couple options. If you're really trying to lose weight, so you just want to have water, tea, or coffee and push yourself off to like 11 or 12 o'clock to get that first meal. Or you can have a protein bar, even it has a little bit of sugar in it, a good protein bar, not granola bar. Granola bar is terrible. You're having like really no carbs in this. Protein bar, nuts, or fruit. I have some beautiful pictures. I'm not on the take from them, but Nugo Dark is great. 10 grams protein, 10 grams sugar. Of course, you can't have any more sugar throughout the day. But that'll be okay. Sardines are always good. Fruit is no, fruit is sugar, but not for the purpose of the diet. You just, you have to go to less than 10 grams of processed sugar. Okay, so you can have sardines, you can have more Nugo Slim bars. No, this is after, because I'm drinking my coffee like before shul. I'm drinking my coffee before shul. Then afterwards, let's say it's like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and I'm a little bit hungry, so I'll either have like, usually you're not really hungry. You obviously can survive for another hour or two. We know we just fasted. So you, if you just have some water or coffee or tea, you'll get rid of that hunger. You just wait another hour or two. But if you have to have something for whatever reason, have like a protein bar or fruit. Nuts are also a good snack. This is one of my favorite college campus snacks. You know, when I meet with students, I have an espresso shot. Oh, it's so good. And some nuts. You know, it's always kosher, a little nuts and fruit. It works out very well. 
very little added sugar in that. Okay, so that gets us to lunch. Okay, now again, the purpose of this is to think about food as little as possible. We fit it all on one sheet. Okay, here's lunch. Now lunch is, we're going to have our carbohydrates then. So the, rule number two, rule number one is less than 10 grams of processed sugar. Rule number two is you want to have less than 100 grams of complex processed carbohydrates a day. So that means basically the equivalent of two slices of bread or a slice of bread and like half a cup of rice or quinoa. Okay, so this we have, I just took a picture of my lunch for seven days. Okay, here you have bread. Do you want to say beer cut Amazon? It's very good. If bread makes you feel bad, which it makes a lot of Americans feel bad now, so do not eat it. You don't have to eat it. Eat it on Shabbat. So if you have gluten allergies or anything like that, that's sourdough bread. Basically, the only bread you should be eating is either sourdough or Ezekiel. That's it. That's your two options. Do not have Wonder Bread. So here's a nice plate. There's some spinach, some avocado, some tomato, egg, bread, cucumber. That's it. I prepare this myself. Maybe my wife made the egg. I don't know. Do you know how long it took? Two or three minutes. That's it. You can prepare. Uh, how long does it take to slice up a tomato or cucumber? Right? And you have some bread. You, if you're packing your lunch, so I have the luxury of working very late every night. So I get to, after I'm done learning, I make lunch and then I go to work. So, but if you're packing your lunch, pack this in the morning or just buy it, you know. But don't, you can't put the dressings and everything else in the salads because rule number three is no vegetable oil. And all the dressings are loaded with that. Now, chorizo over this, which you can't see, is avocado oil. So just throw some avocado oil. The egg is fried with butter because we like butter. We like avocado oil. We like uh, extra virgin olive oil. We just hate everything else. Okay, here's lunch number two. You notice it looks very similar to lunch number one with some variety. There's some fresh mozzarella cheese, some tomatoes, little lox. Instead of bread, I had quinoa that day, about half a cup of quinoa. Avocados, nice fatty food, and some cucumbers. This took even less time to prepare than the other one because I didn't make the quinoa. My wife made it. It was already in the fridge. And I didn't have to fry up an egg. So this took literally like one minute just to put together. That's it. And then I drizzle everything, some salt, a little bit of uh, avocado oil or olive oil, and that's it. I'm done. That's lunch. I'm satisfied. This is like probably four, five, six hundred calories, maybe even around five, six hundred calories. And you're, it's a light meal. If I'm not fully satisfied, maybe I'll pop a few nuts in for dessert. Okay. Meal number three, vegetables, two pieces of bread, an egg. Looks beautiful, no? Ah, this I had. Now, what happened here? It was after the nine days, right? So I'm, you know, I'm not having more. I, I want some meat. So this was left over from Shabbat as a piece of steak, a chicken wing, and some rice. That's it. That was a great lunch. Again, so there's very little carbs and some meat. Usually we do try to have the meat meal at night, but we can make an exception. Okay, next meal. Again, we got some cheese, some, lo- some lox. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think, yeah, th- those are cheese, not eggs. Avocado, cucumber, quinoa. We had a lot of quinoa in the fridge that week. Okay. <laughs> next, a couple eggs. My wife made me delicious. Some cucumbers, quinoa. Yeah, because you know what? Cucumbers are like very refreshing. You know, they're very good. They're, yeah, they're very good. They're very refreshing. Boom, some cucumbers done. This is uh, lox, beets, cucumbers, and, uh, and, some, and some more quinoa. And that's it. That's like basically lunch. So it doesn't take much thought. It's very good. for. It's, it tastes good, and it's quick to make. You can make it. Your wife can make it. Uh, whatever. Yes. Yes, of course. This part of is interactive. Okay, so again, you can Google the problem with vegetable oil, but basically vegetable oil and like cottonseed oil, palm seed oil, all these things, they had like garbage that they didn't know what to do with, and they refine it. It, turns, it comes into this like huge black disgusting thing, and then they put it, make it into vegetable oil. It happens to, especially fried, increase your free radicals and lead to like Alzheimer's, dementia, and, and everything else. You can Google why vegetable oil is bad for you. By the way, also... This is not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it happens to be that most olive oil is actually just vegetable oil with some seasoning. 
you know, and it's controlled by the mob in Sicily or whatever. You can Google that too. I didn't make this stuff up. So, so that's why vegetable oil is so, it sounds good. What could be wrong with corn oil, canola oil? You know, it sounds, uh, yeah, corn, well, it's because it's mostly GMO. So you notice here that we're really not having so many things. This is literally what I eat. Like I just, I just took pictures of what I, of what I was eating. And, I, and afterwards, like, remember, after I eat this lunch, I have to go to college campus and run around 20-year-olds, or run with 20-year-olds. Get them. So, like, so I need a lot of energy. So all these things, everything I'm eating, I want to build energy, not destroy my energy. Food is supposed to be energy-inducing, not energy-reducing. So, yes? Rabbi, you look like you work out. So, it's more so food. well, so I, but if I do, uh, there's a whole different class on uh, exercise and whatever, but there's, uh, we go by... Uh, Working out, you, you should spend one hour a week working out. You can divide that into over a few days, but whatever. Not, not a, if you want, you can, like, we, that would be another class that I'd love to give, but it's beyond the scope of this discussion. By the way, if people just ate like this, you don't have to work out. You just walk a little bit more, and if you eat like this, you are going to feel healthy and feel great. We're going to experiment with you guys. <laughs> Animal fat is okay, right? Animal fat is good. Butter is especially good. Um, by the way, just if you can pass the sign and sheet to sign around, this way I can follow up with you. Okay, now, now by the way, very important point. If now it's like 12 o'clock or so, you're done with your first meal. Okay, so now you're having dinner. Now, between this and dinner, you could get hungry. So again, we're going to go back to our snack option, as it says in our six-day diet. We're going to have water, tea, coffee, uh, with, uh, I don't, with, you can have a protein drink or a protein bar, nuts or a fruit. There's no problem. Is there anything against the sugar substitutes? Yes. We're not, the sugar substitutes are even worse because they can, they, one time, like a, f- a few weeks ago, there was nothing to drink at our, uh, one of our programs, so uh, there's no water, so I just grabbed some Diet Arizona. Now, I had like half a cup, and my body craved more like sugary stuff because you right away create gut bacteria that wants more of this thing. And also, they're just not good for you. They have no calories because like, you know, they're not good for you. They're not really food. And we, this is like a real diet. Everything here is like real food, real beets, real cucumbers, real quinoa, real fish, you know, it, it, there's no reason. What about honey instead of sugar. Honey. Yeah. So again, it's very, very, very sweet. So it's not really that different. You know, it's like if the best thing if you want to put a little bit of honey in your coffee, I guess it's okay. But if you just accustom yourself not to have it, it's much easier. But we do allow ourselves up to 10 grams of sugar. So if you want to have like a little piece of chocolate, like extra oh, dark chocolate, 10 grams. 10 gram, that's a great question. 10 grams is two teaspoons. By the way, right now, the average American eats like 100 grams of sugar a day plus. A, a Snapple bottle, just that thing has 40 grams of sugar. You know, Coke, it's all. And, you know, if, 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 you, ju- if you just take that out, you're going to be so much better and healthier. And these things, look, I don't, at the end of the day, why am I doing this? Because I love people and I want everyone to feel good and feel strong. And most importantly, like live long and productive lives to serve Hashem. And these things are just slowing us down. Like everyone knows Coca-Cola is bad for you, right? There's, I don't think you can find one person that will say it's good for you. I actually, I, we, I had like some, this is like, uh, I wanted to show my kids how bad for you Coke was. So my car went started and there was like battery acid fluid all over the battery, you know, the car battery. And I said, kids, you have the soda left over from the Shabbaton. Bring me the Coca-Cola. We poured it over. It disintegrated it. Right? This is a known fact. You could Google this too. The, the kids are like, okay, I won't be drinking that. It lasted for a little bit anyway. Um, <laughs> they are, okay. Here's a dinner we all know and love. You want to have your dinner by 9 p.m.? Yes, it's plov with a little quail egg, some garlic. You didn't make garlic. Huh? No, not Manti. Manti, we're, we're under 100. Manti, you got to wait for Shabbos, okay? Wait for Shabbos. So, and there's nothing wrong. You have a little bit of rice. You have like some good beef. Eggs are great. Quail eggs, garlic. You have a little bit of plov. There's no problem. We're eating great. Next, I was at a restaurant. By the way, you're going to save a lot of money eating this way also. 
I, I know, but a little bit of plov. If you have it once in a while, you can have it. I, I don't have it. You know, I'm working for Emma. We're, uh, we think that it's, it should be at every meal. So, <laughs> so I went out with my wife to eat. We split a steak. Right? I can't even eat a full steak. They give you a 16-ounce steak. Who can eat a 16-ounce steak? I mean, I used to be able to. So anyway, we split a steak. So here, here, perfect example. You have eight ounces of meat, nice fatty ribeye, and some vegetables on the side. That's it. It's like a great meal. You feel great afterwards. And by the way, you know when you have like a nice light meal, you feel so strong and good. If you have a very if too heavy of a meal, if you added some bread and rice and everything else to that, you feel ill. You know, we did have a sushi appetizer, which was very good. Okay, here's a, a dinner I had. Those are, it was like a nine-day dinner. Those things are uh, fried fish cakes in avocado oil with, with like organic cornflake crumbs. So hopefully it wasn't that poisonous. The famous cucumbers, little sushi salad that my wife made, some uh, other stuff, avocado, tomato. And that's it. That's dinner. Again, not too complex. Oh, my favorite dinner, sushi, right? This is, you know, I probably have twice as much as that. It's like six pieces. So you have a, a roll or two, which like we had today. It's great. Now what's in it? Avocado, uh, some white, not so much rice, some rice, you know, uh, a lot of avocados, a lot of fish, a lot of like good fat from the fish. We obviously want to, you know, minimize the sauces, but a little bit is not a big deal. You know, mainly the main thing is to not veer from these meals. Next. That's getting ready for Shabbat, right? It's like we have ribeye, we have uh, flanken, we have some other awesome steaks in there. Because that, the, and you could eat that for any dinner, really. Okay, so, does any, so this is basically the plan on Sunday through Friday. It's extremely not complex. There's three rules. Besides the four rules from, four or five rules from the Torah guidelines, we also have have less than 10 grams of processed sugar a day, less than 100 grams of complex carbohydrates a day, and no vegetable oil. We're not worried about your caloric intake. I don't care how many calories you have. By the way, there's a book out uh, that a man experimented on himself. He had 6,000 calories a day with no carbs and no sugar. Like, I mean, limited carbs, mostly vegetables, meat, fat, cheese. He gained three pounds, but lost three inches around the stomach at 6,000 calories a day. Then, a couple weeks later, he had 6,000 calories a day, standard American diet. 60% carb, 20% protein, 20% fat. He gained 21 pounds and many inches around the stomach. So it has nothing to do with calories. It's just really about what you eat, right? And by the way, do not, although you can have fruit as a snack, do not have fruit first thing in the morning because it's like going to set your whole day wrong. You really do not, you know, you, you maybe you have like one fruit, but not this whole fruit shake, because it's, it's, even though it's not refined sugar, it's still too much sugar. So, okay, now, so does anyone have any questions about the, Sunday through Friday? Basically, you're eating two main meals, like it says in the Shulchan Aruch and the Gemara. You're having coffee with butter or cream in the morning to get that fat in. And you're having some sort of snack or just water or tea or coffee to get yourself from one meal to the next. Does it, oatmeal. Oatmeal, is oatmeal is nowhere on this because we're limiting our carbs, right? So oatmeal, most oatmeal is GMO and pretty much poisonous for you. But even the ones that's not, like you just don't need it. We want to get ourselves used to burning fat instead of burning carbohydrates. Uh, what so, about all those, uh, I'm sorry. No, you can ask American, all the questions. American diets that actually work. Right, so the American diets work... Uh, first of all, let, let's put you it this way. So uh, any, most American diets uh, involve a limitation of calories. So that works in the short term. But in the long term, like you wind up getting more weight because you can't sustain that calorie limitation and you just get too hungry and miserable. So, right, so then there are certain lifestyles that you know, mimic this very much. It's called intermittent fasting. It's called paleo dieting. That also is going to work if you're going to eat that way. But the, the problem here is we're just fo- trying to follow the Torah guidelines, you know, which is something nice to do if you're Jewish. And all the paleo stuff where they really want you to, li- or low carb, where they want you to limit your fat intake, I mean limit your carb intake and have lots of fat and protein. Why do they all say to do it? Because this is the way your ancestors ate 500,000 years ago. So, but we don't believe that. So we're Jewish and we say, no, we, actually the Shulchan Aruch 
also it recommends intermittent fasting. It's not a new thing. And not eating processed food is something everyone knows. So we're not, as soon as you hear paleo, then you're already looking back to being a caveman. We're not cavemen. We're Jews. You know? And so this is a Torah approach to eating. There are other diets that work 100%. Uh, other d- different ways of eating that work, but we're, we're just gonna, we're trying to stick with this because I figure if we're Jewish anyway, and some of us are religious, so the only thing that's going to sell us is what is this, what state in the Shulchan Aruch, what is the state in the Code of Jewish Law. That that's the bottom line. So now, obviously, they didn't talk about vegetable oil or refined sugar or refined uh, grains in the Shulchan Aruch because they didn't have it. You know, and if you want to say birkat amazon every day. It's a great idea. Have a slice of bread. Don't have like a loaf of bread. Have half a bagel. It, the thing with the, with the bread, it's hard to stop because it's like they cha- doctored the wheat and it's very, very addictive. Okay, now, any other questions about the five days? Yes, Mark. I don't eat bread at all except for my breakfast bagel. Okay, so great. So all you have to do is stop eating the breakfast bagel. No, by the way, the easiest... I was saying, if I'm allowed to have bread in one of the meals I'm eating, can that get... Again, so you don't want the... The easiest way Abel James wrote this book uh, in his book, The Wild Diet, he wrote one sentence. He said the surest way to lose weight is to very simply cut out carbohydrates and refine sugar, especially first thing in the morning. So get rid of the bagel. You, what, what, we still have some more. Uh, we, we, we're almost done. We have some more lovely slides. First thing in the morning, you're absolutely recommending this coffee with... Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, I didn't make any of this up. You could go to the uh, Bulletproof Coffee. Like, everyone what really... If you get, what if you could get through your morning without having coffee? Oh, so if you, if you don't need it, you don't need it. But you need something. Like, this so will tie you over. Orange. You can have tea with butter. No, no orange juice. You do not want to have water. sugar. Water. Yeah, Did you say water? Can I just have no. water? Yes, you can definitely have water. You, can, water. you could have just water. You, you, everyone, and then go straight to lunch. Ed. Yes, by the way, you should always have water first thing when you wake up. Yeah. Right? Water. water right away. If you can last to lunch, great. You can, I, I don't, all our water is room temperature. It's, sta- it's in the pool and spring bottle standing there. So the water is always at room temperature. If you cut out your bagel, for, just try it for a week. You're going to feel great. Have half a bagel for lunch. But you need vegetables also. Like, it's, here, first meal, slice of bread, or, or I guess half a bagel, one cup of quinoa, rice, or avocado. There's another option with, uh, with avocado, egg, cheese, veggies, anything like that. But make sure you have vegetables. Robert, yes? Usually most people, including me, if I have a good breakfast, right. if I have more time and I have, I'm home, right. and, and, and my wife makes me a nice right. three eggs or whatever, right. I go to, to work and I feel good working. Well, if, again, I'm not telling you, I'm just saying that we, like three eggs, if you have three eggs, it's not a problem. But next time you go to a Brit, if you just have an egg or two, so then you're, you're eating great. No, but breakfast, people do not have eggs. People have cereal, people have bread and eggs, people, muffins, everything like that. Well, not crazy people. This, the average American is having lots of carbs first thing in the morning because they're so addicted to carbs. So, you're joking. You walk by any Dunkin' Donuts in the morning. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they're, they're not having eggs. They're having a. If you again, the best thing if you can. Just, again, we have a recommendation. Not Try to put. Yourself. You can have a snack, like you know, in the beginning, but you want to be able to push off that first meal to like eleven, ten, eleven, twelve o'clock. Okay, just your wife makes it for you. Pack it to go, or have a little bit later. Now, okay, so that's the first. Uh, that's Monday right, so through that's Friday. Yes. I could get to just having water until like whatever, like 12 o'clock when I have my first meal, that's okay? Yeah, but you may or be you too hot. I, if you can somehow have tea or coffee with some fat, it just starts your day off right. You'll be like, think, just try for a day or two. Okay. Try, try for a day or two. You, need, you don't necessarily need something. You can train your body to do most yeah. things, but it's just good for your mind. You'll, you'll be more focused in davening, learning. It's just, it's just easier to focus. That's what I find. Like, before, I tried a lot of different eating experimentations. If I had, like, you know, if you ever go to Bris in the morning, like, you just have to bring a pillow to learning because you're going to pass out, like, or work or wherever it is that you're going. So we want to avoid that. Okay, so also the Friday night meal. So you can, you know, you can, 
definitely break from the regiment and have whatever you want. But I really try, besides the challah, to stick to like, I have like three times as much meat as I normally do, but I really try to stick to like having the meat at night. Okay, now here comes Shabbat. This is the kicker of this diet because, you know, even though this stuff's not great for you, once a week it will not kill you, I promise. Maybe a little bit. But uh, so uh, I don't know if God will forgive it. And also, psychologically, if you know you can last till Shabbat, then you won't even want to have it on Shabbat either. <laughs> but if you think it's, you can never have it again, then it, it does, like you were telling me, like if you if to go vegetarian, never eat meat again, it's not going to work. You'll last three days. So I'm not saying you cannot have bread products. We have challah rolls, bagels. All sorts of, this is, I took this at the local bagel store. We got rugula, corn muffins, chocolate chip muffins at 400 calories a pop. You know, it's loaded with vegetable oil, sugar, and, and, and processed carbohydrates. No, just wait till Shabbat. You can have all this stuff. You know, um, you can have pizza for Malava Malka, whatever you want. You have really Saturday is the free day, right? Saturday is the day, have whatever you want and see how you feel. You know, if you, this way you're not really missing anything. You're just waiting till Saturday. Does that sound, sounds okay? Yeah. All right. Now, the choice is yours, okay? A lot of times people say like, oh, if I go to this place, I, there's nothing to eat. So I went, uh, I went to like a, a, whatever, like a small gathering. And there was a lot of different things on the table. So I want to show you. I took this picture of what the person across from you ate. That is not nice. Now look, there's popcorn covering the cake, some like Dori- uh, you know, like Dorito type kosher version of Doritos to the right, and to the left there's like these onion crisp things that have no onions in it. So complete poison, complete poison. Okay. Now I and I'm sitting right next to him. Now look what I chose to eat at the same place. Fish. Herring, herring is great for you. Tomatoes, and they had some guacamole. So, like these two pictures juxtapose almost wherever you go, Bukharian wedding, wherever it is, Ashkenazi wedding. It's like it, this is this is this is in the same place at the same time. It's like unbelievable. You, the choice really is yours. I put them right next to each other just for uh, now. Come if, I don't know. The tablecloth's the same. You could check my phone. There was, the, the picture was taken four minutes apart. But I guess they wanted to do some variety, so they'd serve different plates. Good question. So it was not set up. So I'll tell you, um, you know, it's when you eat food that's good for you, it's like, look at the colors. You know, there's like green and red and purple, and it's like so alive. When you eat food that's bad for you, it looks, bad. <laughs> it looks, it looks like death, you know? It's like, it's unbelievable. So... Of course, the person who's eating it told me he's actually healthy and, and whatever. So everyone thinks they're healthy, by the way. So luckily, with, with, food, uh, with health, uh, you know, unlike being a tzaddik or a tzaddikist, you, you can't hide it as well. So that's it. That's basically the, the six-day diet. We have our loss from, the, from recommendations from the Torah, which is to keep it to not eating between four to six hours after you wake up for the first meal, keeping it to... Uh, Two meals a day, very, very important. Making the lunch meal light uh, and having meat during the nighttime meal if you can. Uh, and then we have our own rules, which are less than 10 grams of processed sugar a day, less than 100 grams of complex carbohydrates a day, no vegetable oil, only avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil. Of course, you can always use butter. And we have, you know, we have our meals, morning, sna- our morning, our snack if you need it, first meal, snack two, dinner by nine. Very easy. The whole Shabbat, you could do whatever you want. The whole goal of this is to get you to think about food as little as possible and just use food for energy and for health and to serve Hashem to the best of our ability. So um, I want to thank everyone for coming and and listening. And then we're going to turn off the the mic and then we're going to see if we have any more questions at the end. All right. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.